All right, so the purpose of this climate graphs activity is that we first off want to get some experience looking at climate graphs and being able to interpret them. Okay, what do they say? How do we read them? What do they tell us about the climate of an area? And the second part is an investigation of factors affecting climate. Okay. Yesterday we went over, or day before yesterday, sorry, we went over climate and the factors that affect it. What were some, well, what were the components of climate first? There were four of those. Wind, precipitation, light, and temperature. Right, temperature, precipitation, light, and wind are the four components of climate. Those four components can be affected by the factors that affect climate. What were some of the factors? Mountain barriers, presence of mountain yeah. barriers. Okay, latitude, I think you also said altitude. Okay, what else? Those would be like the big three for us right here. There were some others. Wind. Okay, prevailing wind patterns, yep. How close you are to the ocean. Okay, what else? Something that happens in the ocean. Ocean currents, yeah. That'd be things like El Nino, La Nina, uh, the North Atlantic current, the Labrador current. Okay, things like that. Okay, and the last one, I don't know if anyone will remember it, but centers of high and low pressure. Okay, so those are the factors that affect climate. So what we want to see is how do they affect climate? And we're going to do that by looking at a bunch of climatograms from various Canadian cities. Okay, so I've got a whole whack of them. You can see them actually in there whole bunch of the uh, climatographs or climatographs for these Canadian cities. And what we're going to do initially is um, just look at them and we're going to go, okay, so based on how they look, which cities should go together? Now, it can't just be about how they look. Like, don't just go by shape. Shape is a start. But you also have to look at the scale because not all of the climatographs have the same scale. Right? Case in point, this climate graph for Prince Rupert, B.C. has a similar shape to the climate graph for St. John's, Newfoundland. Would I put them in the same group? Not at all. They have completely different climates. Even though at first glance, their climate graphs have a similar shape. Okay? In actual fact, because of the scale, their climates are nothing alike. Okay? The wettest month in St. John's, Newfoundland is about 150 or 160 millimeters of rain. In Prince Rupert, it's 380. Okay. It's about the scale. You, I can make an extremely dry place look really wet if I make the scale ridiculous. Okay. And so that's what's happened here. Because Prince Rupert gets so much rain, we've had to make the scale kind of ridiculous in order to show that. Okay? And in the end, it ends up making the bars look like they're the same size as the bars on this graph. But they're not. Okay? The other thing that's different is the temperature. Okay? Look at the scale here for temperature. Right? In Prince Rupert, it almost never goes below zero, but also never really gets above about 13 degrees. Whereas in Newfoundland, it goes as low as minus 5 and goes as high as 15. But those don't really have similar climates, so I wouldn't put them in a group. The other side of that, would I put this city and this city in a group together? Yeah. I definitely would. Okay? I mean, if I look at their, their scales, the scale is essentially the same. It's, it's, it's a little bit different, but it's essentially the same. And the bars have about the same shape. Okay? And their temperature lines are also very similar. 
Okay, in Halifax, the maximum temperature is about 17 degrees. Minimum temperature, minus 5. That's pretty close to St. John, Newfoundland. And then if I think logically about it, yeah, they're both in the Maritimes. They should probably have climates that are similar. So yes, they're going to go together. And so the first part of this is figuring out just from the graphs what cities have similar climates. Put them in a group. So we would probably call this like the Atlantic climate or the maritime climate or something like that. And there's probably going to be more than those two cities in it. Okay? Um, Prince Rupert would definitely go in a different group. Maybe it would be called the Pacific climate or something like that. It would have a different name because it's got different properties. Okay? So that's the first task is to figure out what cities go together. Okay? So if we're looking at the analysis part of this, Okay, so with your group, and you can work in groups here, okay, uh, group the different climates based on your findings. So you might have a couple of cities that have similar climate and features, put them in, the, in a group together. You should have, I would say, as a bare minimum, five groups, as a maximum, eight. Okay, it depends how picky you want to get. Okay, if you have less than five, you only got four groups, you're not being creative enough. Okay, you should be able to come up with at least five and not more than eight. Um, then once you've got those groups, then you need to talk about, okay, what do these groups, what do the cities in this group have in common? Right, so if I've got one group and it's all cities from Atlantic Canada, I should probably talk about what climate factors they would have in common. Well, they're all probably around the same latitude. I could look that up and it's probably a good idea to do so. Okay, it's one of the things I'd be looking for. Um, look up their altitudes, they're probably all around sea level. Okay? They're all on the east coast, so they're not near mountain barriers or anything like that, but they're definitely close to the ocean. Look up those factors affecting climate. What are the factors that affect the climate in the Atlantic or maritime climate group? What are the factors that affect the climate in the prairie group? Or whatever, whatever you decide to make up. Okay? So you're going to have your group, and then you're going to have beside it, here are the factors that affect this group and how they affect. And that'd be the first part of the analysis. Once you've built those groups and you've come up with the factors that affect it, okay, then you're going to do question number two. And in question number two, I give you a bunch more cities, but I don't give you their graphs. All I want you to do with these cities is look them up on Google Earth to see where they are. Based on where they are and what factors might affect their climate, stick them in the appropriate group, the groups you've already made. Okay, so if I've got a group that's got Halifax and St. John's and Charlottetown in it, then probably St. John, New Brunswick would probably fit in that group because it's going to be a maritime city. It's going to have an altitude of zero meters or 10 meters or whatever. Okay, uh, and it's going to have a similar latitude. It's right on the Atlantic Ocean. All the same factors would affect its climate as affect the, the uh, rest of the cities in that group. Okay? And you would just justify St. John, New, or St. John, New, uh, New Brunswick goes in this group because. Okay, Okotoks goes in this group because. Okay, does that sort of make sense? That's what you'd be looking at. Now we're going to have all day tomorrow and all day Monday to work on this. Okay, my intention is that you will definitely get it done in class, and it will not be for homework. Okay, I don't intend for you to have to take this home. I get that we're approaching June. You've probably got lots of stuff coming due. you got unit exams and final exams to start studying for. This is not the time of year where I start piling on homework. Okay? Like, you might have this activity and one more activity that would also be an in-class activity left to hand in to me. Okay? I'm not going to take in a lot of stuff in class. Okay? All right. Uh, so if we go back here to um, hypothesis. We didn't talk about that, I skipped over it. Okay. Generate a hypothesis that's a tentative answer to the problem. Okay. Again, if, and, and then statement. So the, in the if part, tell me what factors you think would be the most important for cities in Canada. You don't have to list them all. Okay. Just which ones you think would have the biggest effect. Maybe pick four. Okay. Which four do you think would be the most important? Okay. The and part, so your if part will be if the factors of blah, blah, blah affect climate in this way, and... Canadian cities uh, are compared via their climate data, then, in the then part, I want some patterns, okay? So what I'm looking for here is something like this. 
then cities near the Atlantic Ocean will all have climates like this. And cities in the prairies will all have climates like this. Just pick like three. It's gonna be kind of a long then part. Okay? But pick about three patterns that you think you're gonna see based on the biggest factors affecting climate. Okay, I told you to pick four in the if part. Okay, so tell me what are the patterns that can be produced by those factors. Now, for some of these climate graphs, because it was kind of hard to find climate graphs for a lot of the cities, okay? A lot of them look very similar, but again, make sure you check your scales, okay? Like this one here only goes to minus five, this one goes to minus 10. They're similar shapes, so they can go together, okay? Um, Charlatan, they got, again, a slightly different uh, scale here. So don't let the, the shapes fool you until you've looked at the scale. Um, you know, you got Toronto here, look at your bars, okay? They only go up to about 90, or 85 or 90 millimeters of rain versus the 140 we saw in the other one, okay? Uh, look at your temperature scale. The temperature scales are pretty uniform, but they're not exact, okay? And then you got Winnipeg that looks quite a bit different, okay, than Toronto does. You got Regina that looks kind of a lot like Winnipeg. Um, and you got Victoria, which is like almost the opposite. Okay. Just make sure you're looking at the scales, okay? Again, the scales here go to 160, but on this graph in Whitehorse, it only goes to 40. Okay, don't get them confused. They have very different rainfalls, even if the bars look the same, okay? All right, so you kind of follow, like how easy is it gonna to be to follow these, like look at these patterns? Like I can see two right now that are on the screen that you want to group together, okay? That's, that's all you have to do when you're deciding on your groups, all right? Now, these are the ones that are all generally similar in scale. Then it kind of fell apart on me. And I had trouble finding good climate graphs for the, for the rest of the data. So they start to change uh, quite a bit in terms of scale and appearance. Okay, like these ones here, they get kind of crazy. Um, so you kind of have to look at the, um, at the legends here. Um, obviously the bars are just look at the precipitation here in millimeters, okay? But for the temperature, there's three different lines, and I think the, um, it's the purple one that you'll wanna use because the purple one is the average, okay? The other two are the minimum and maximum temperatures, so go with the purple one, okay? On these two graphs, the purple one's the important one, okay? Uh, this graph two, purple one's the important one. Uh, and then Hopedale, okay? it's hard to find a climate graph that had the same scale, so it's a bit different. This one, same thing, green bars and purple line, okay, for those. So, um, yeah, just make sure you're kind of keeping an eye on the scale when you're doing this, okay? So there'll be a bit of writing in the analysis, a bit of justification, and when you're looking up the properties for those groups, so if I'm looking up all the um, you know, information for everything in the Atlantic climate, things I'm gonna be looking for you to tell me about a callow, it would be latitude, altitude, okay, and then other factors, okay, whatever ones you think are important based on where it is, okay, that's like altitude and latitude are easy to find with a simple Google search, okay, those are two that you should definitely have for each city when you're talking about why it fits in this group or the other one. Okay, um, so like I said, we're going to have Friday and Monday to uh, work on that. Okay. Um, the way things are going right now, I am going to set your unit for exam date. Okay, because this is short unit, so I gotta set it now so you get the two weeks notice. Okay, on our unit four exam. Will be June 9th. Unit four will be June the 9th. So you want to add that to your calendar. Okay. okay. And then your final exam, that's been up for a while, but um, June 22nd at 9 o'clock in the morning. Right? I know, like, 
it seemed like a long way away when I wrote it on the board, but it's now less than a month away. And, and the last few weeks tend to go really fast, and I'm not going to mince words, you're going to get swamped. Okay? Everything comes due in the next few weeks, so um, try and make sure that you're keeping your head above water, and maybe take a few less shifts at work, okay? stuff like that. But uh, give yourself time, adequate time to do this. Okay? Your exam for your final exam for science ten is not no fault. Okay, it's ten percent of your final mark. Okay, it makes a difference. So you, you got to be ready for it. Okay. Um, so help sessions, guys. I have not seen very many people lately. For a while there, I was seeing lots of people every single day, but I'm seeing a lot fewer of you. And uh, I should start seeing a reversal of that again. Pop in, you don't have to stay in for a whole lunch hour, you don't have to stay for two hours after school. I'm not doing two hours after school. Okay. Uh, but come in and see me, just pop in and you know, ask a quick question if you need it. You know, or Mr. Goodhart, can you show me how to do mole equation? I forgot, that kind of stuff. But come in and, and ask questions because if you wait, you're gonna find, man, I just got too much to do and now I can't get in. Okay. Um, other little suggestions here. I know it's still almost a month away, but it wouldn't be a bad idea if you got five or ten minutes here or there to get your notes organized. Maybe just start reading over some things that are a few months old now, okay, to start refreshing them. Every little bit of time you spend now is time you don't have to spend cramming later. Okay? And you're far better off to do it now than later. Okay? So, you know, commercial breaking your favorite show, do a uh, balance a chemical reaction or predict a chemical reaction. Okay, or look at a cell diagram, okay, or something like that. Just little bits. Okay, I'm not saying you have to sit down and study for three hours a day for the rest of the, for the next month. You don't. Okay, that wouldn't be healthy. Um, but take little bits of time here and there. You'd be surprised how far that goes when it gets closer to the time and you're studying your stuff. Oh yeah, I remember that. I remember that. I studied it two weeks ago. Okay, now, it goes a long way. It doesn't maybe seem like it right now, but it does. Okay, so start thinking about that. Start looking at your schedule and planning. When do I have time to study? Okay, if you do that well ahead of time, it's more likely to be there when you need it. Right. Um, questions from you guys? Anything? Okay, that's all I got for today. I've done a little bit earlier. Okay, so that's all I got for today. Keep so, what exactly do you want done with the graphs and all? I want you to use the graphs to make groups of cities. With similar findings. And you tell me about those groups. Yeah? Doesn't matter what quantity there is. How many groups do I want? Five to eight. Okay. Yeah. Okay? It doesn't matter how many are each group. You might have a group that's only got one city in it that's kind of a loner. That happens. Okay. Yeah. Okay? Most groups will have probably two to four, maybe more. But you might have the odd group that's just one. Like uh, Prince Rupert, for example, there's not a lot of like Prince Rupert. It's like quite a bit different. You could make an argument to have something else in this group, but it kind of tends to be by itself. How many graphs? I don't know. I didn't count them. So we got here two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, nineteen graphs. Why do you want to Uh, you could just like build a, a chart. You could say, you know, Atlantic climate, put the cities, and then have another column that talks about the factors. It doesn't really matter how you want to do. You just have a heading, Atlantic climate, list the cities, and list underneath, as long as they're grouped somehow. I'm, I'm good with that. Okay. Um, so, like I said, unless there's any other questions, that's all I got for you for today. Uh, but tomorrow we'll start out right away with the Chromebooks on this. I'll give a little recap and then you guys can get going on. You don't have to have a group for this. I used to make everybody build the climate graphs by hand. And that took a long time so you could split it up with group members. But you have all the climate graphs, so if you would rather work alone, that's also fine. Okay? There isn't any more work to do alone than there is to do it in a group.